This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hi, uh, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and today I'm here with yet another interesting case. Uh, this is a 70-year-old lady with coloboma of the iris and a dense nuclear cataract which is almost to grade 4 to grade 5 with a small calcified speck on the anticapsule. So I have multiple challenges to deal with in this case. The lens is quite hard and bulky, loose zonules are to be expected and we have a relatively shallow antechamber to deal with and a small cornea. This lack of space uh, to manage the dense cataract and to complicate things, this small calcified speck on the anticapsule is concerning me. My plan is to do a slightly larger excess by trying to work around this calcified speck. The capsule in these cataracts will be thin and flimsy and especially in the quadrant of the coloboma, the anticapsule is more vulnerable for tear and peripheral extension during nucleus manipulation. Trepan Blue is used to stain the anticapsule and I am using Viscoat for protecting the endothelium. The main 2.8 mm incision is created followed by injection of HPMC under the viscoat. It's something like a modified soft shell technique. As I try to puncture the anticapsule, wrinkling of the anticapsule is an indication of the loose zonules in this patient. The rexus is being performed carefully with the forceps, which is providing me better control and the tearing edge is gently maneuvered. So as soon as I reach the area of the calcified speck, I try to move around it. Luckily, the capsule behaved quite well in this quadrant. The CCC is completed and looks all right, but I thought I'd like to have a slightly bigger one, especially in the inferior quadrant. So I enlarge the capsular opening using the scissors and the forceps and eventually I have a decent sized rexus which would make my life easier with the subsequent steps. Hydro dissection is gently performed by injecting very small amount of BSS under the anticapsule uh, followed by decompression. Before proceeding with emulsification, I ensure that the nucleus is free from its attachments to the capsular bag by gentle rotation. My plan is to perform a four quadrant divide and conquer technique instead of a direct chop which I usually use. The reason being the four quadrant technique will induce less stress on the zonules and the anticapsule during lateral separation and also coring of the central dense nucleus helps us in creating enough space in the antechamber which is going to be of great help during nucleus manipulation later on. The chances of the wound burn with this technique would be minimal because I'm using a torsional ultrasound in this case. During sculpting, I try to stabilize the nucleus with my second instrument. The sculpting is performed in a controlled manner and an important principle to understand during sculpting is that the nucleus should never be pushed. Instead, the nucleus material should be gently shaved off without causing any undue stress on the zonules. So it's important to have an appropriate phaco power so that uh, the tip cuts through this tense nucleus effortlessly. So I create these deep trenches which are perpendicular to each other and the depth should be almost 90%. Once the four 
deep trenches are created now is the time to separate these quadrants and the lateral separation is being performed using uh, a phaco probe and my second instrument during lateral separation it's important to place these instruments as deep into the trench as it's possible and they're pressed against the walls and then they're moved away separating the two fragments as we can clearly see here the leathery fibers are indeed difficult to separate and it takes some effort to do so. However, two of the fragments could not be separated completely and just I leave them alone and I thought I'll deal with them later. So now is the time for emulsifying these fragments and each of these fragments will be quite large and bulky and I need to be concerned about this as there is a positive space and the corneal endothelial damage and anti-capsular tear are distinct possibilities even during nucleus manipulation. So I engage the first uh, fragment of the nucleus and pull it out gently a little bit out of the bag. Try to divide it uh, so that the size of this fragment can be reduced and then each of these fragments are emulsified at the level of the anti-capsule. So I'm trying to minimize the chatter by controlling the energy delivery so that we don't have these small tiny nuclear fragments bombarding and hitting the corneal endothelium. And at the completion of emulsification of each of these fragments, OVD is always re-injected. Now we reach a stage where the last two fragments are need to be dealt with and we, as we remember, these two fragments are attached to the base. After creating some space with OVD, the attached basal portion of these two fragments is gently manipulated upwards using a lens styler. Then the phaco tip is introduced and uh, the adhesion between these two fragments is emulsified. Subsequently, the third fragment is emulsified in a controlled manner. So again, the OVD is injected before dealing with the last fragment. But as I reach for the last fragment, I can see that the anterior chamber is progressively shallowing. The posterior capsule is being pushed forward and I can see the shimmering reflex of the, the posterior capsule very close to the phaco tip. But somehow at this stage, I am still thinking that I can manage this. I am working slightly anteriorly in the antechamber, but the positive pressure behind the PC is ensuring that the PC is consistently being pushed forward. And at this moment, I get that feeling that something is not right. And I come out and well, I was right. A small round punched out hole in the poster capsule is staring at me. The taut posterior capsule, which was being pushed anteriorly, got caught in the phaco probe and resulting in this circular tear. Well, this was happening because the irrigating fluid was traversing across the zonules through the coloboma region and going into the space behind the posterior capsule into the Berger space, and this was pushing the PC forward. This was a classical intraoperative fluid misdirection syndrome, which is to be expected in these eyes with colobomas. The viscoat is again introduced uh, to ensure that the PC tear and the uh, vitreous is tamponed ad adequately. The remaining small fragment is visco expressed. I can see a few vitreous fibers at the edge of the PC tear. Diluted tramsinol acetate is used to confirm it. Now it's time to proceed with anti-vitrectomy. 
uh, care is taken that the bottle height is kept at a very low uh, height so that the irrigation is quite slow and gentle uh, which ensures that the detrectomy could be done without enlarging the posterior capsular tear. Once the limited antivitrectomy is completed, the remaining cortex needs to be dealt with. After cortex aspiration, the capsule bag is inflated with OVD and a single piece a hydrophobic iol is placed into the bag. The OVD behind the lens and in front of the lens is gently washed out using gentle irrigation. And during all these manipulations, we could see that the PC tear has not enlarged. Uh, thanks to the round margins and minimal fluctuations in the pressure uh, across the posterior capsule. Uh, before closing off, I thought I'll take care of the eccentric pupil, which was exceedingly downward drawn. So I'm using my cutter to trim the superior margin of the pupil to minimize this downward drawn pupil. Finally, the job is done and indeed it was quite a long case. The next day, the expected the cornea was slightly edematous, but eventually it does clear off and this is how the eye looks on looks at the third post-operative day. Uh, thank you for attention and hope this helps.